Welcome to this short demonstration on portal frames in FEM design. Let's start with defining the structure. In the structure tab, I select column and then customize my column. I select my cross section under steel sections. Gonna select HEA. 160 and I'm going to select my material S355 click OK I have the option to place it above or below the cursor I'm going to choose above and I place it onto my drawing to place my next column I'm going to use the position of the current column. I'm going to hover the mouse over the insertion point and press F12. Here I can enter the coordinates relative to the current point. So if I enter six meters in the X direction, my column will be placed six meters from this point. And I want to place another one at the same position. I can copy my columns using the copy function. Select my columns and I select a base point. Select this one and the same manner as before I can place them relative to this position. I'm going to put 0 in the x direction and 4 in the y direction. I can now go ahead and draw some beams. In the structure tab I can se I select beam and I customize my beam. I select a material for steel and a cross-section, let's say IPE 120. Then start drawing my beams from point to point. Now I have a small frame. I also have the option to add truss members. For this example, I'm going to add some cross section, say a circular hollow section of 30. And I can drag my trust members from point to point. I'm also going to place some supports under my columns. In the support tab, I select point support group. Here I can customize my point support by editing the motions and rotations around the three axes. I'm just going to place them underneath each column. We can now go ahead and start applying some loads. In the loads tab, I'm going to define some load cases. Self-weight. I will select the type plus structural dead load. This way the self-weight will be automatically applied to the structure. I'm going to apply some horizontal loads, namely wind load. I can do that either manually by creating two load cases from my two directions, let's say, 
between x and win y. And then for each of these load cases, I would apply wind loads on my columns in each direction. I can do that, or I can use the wind macro function. This wind macro function generates wind loads on the structure automatically. For that, I'm going to need a cover. I go back to the structure tab and I have here the cover function. This cover is like a surface onto my structure, onto my frame. If I draw the cover like that, the loads that are applied to this cover will be distributed to the supporting structure. So I go ahead and draw the cover around my structure. In the Loads tab, I select Wind Generic Building. I first have to define external walls. So I go on each side of my structure and I right click on the cover and on a point exterior to my building. That way I have defined an external wall. So right click on the cover and click outside in the exterior. I do that for all sides. And I also define a roof. I have a flat roof here. I right click on the cover on the roof and then select a direction. I now have external walls on my structure. So I can go to generate wind load in the wind load menu. And here I have the window for my wind properties. I can enter wind speed, building height, and the terrain type. After I select all of these, I click OK. And the program generates some wind loads. I can see here that it automatically creates wind load cases for me. I can use these to form load combinations. I now have a lot of load cases generated by FemDesign. If I don't need to use all of them, I can delete them from load cases. I won't need wind X or wind Y. Say I delete I can generate load combinations automatically in FemDesign. For that, I need to create load groups. So first I go to load groups. And I can see that a load group for wind is automatically created with all of the wind load cases. I can have to create a load group for self weight. And put to self weight. One potentially leading temporary load group should be defined. 
that means that I need to select my wind load group as potentially leading load case. And I click OK. I can now go to load combinations and click on generate. Here I select the load cases that I want included and the types of load combinations. Ultimate limit states, I don't want accidental or seismic. And serviceability, quasi-permanent, frequent or characteristic. Click OK and some load combinations are generated. I can now go ahead and perform a structure analysis. To perform an analysis, we go to the Analysis tab and click Calculate. Here we select a calculation on load combinations. To view the results, we go to the results menu. And here we see our results according to the load combinations. You can see the displacements. According to um, this load combination, and we can get values by using the automatic numeric values. Here we can choose global maximum or minimum, and we see the displacements here. We can see the bar internal forces, actual force in the bars, and if we go to detailed result and right click on an element, we can see all of the internal forces for that element. This report can easily be added to the documentation by clicking on the add view to, do, to documentation. To design my structure, I go to the Steel Design tab. Here I have to define the buckling length for my elements. I choose Properties, and I right-click on the buckling length of an element. Here I can choose lengths from predefined types, or I can enter a value by myself. I can also perform a multiple selection and assign buckling lengths to several elements. I do that for Flexural buckling in the stiff direction, flexural buckling in the weak direction, and lateral torsional and shear buckling. Once I have done that, I can go to auto design and I can start designing my structure. I select design and I can right click on any element. And FEM Design will choose an appropriate profile. I can set the parameters from which FEM Design to choose from and select which profiles I want. I can also select all of my elements and click on Design. I can see in the utilization table the utilization for each element.
I can go to apply design changes and recalculate to check my model with the new profiles.